So we are here. My name is Maddles, and we are about to jump into a very unusual replay with an awful lot of fun involved. It is going to be between FXO's Hurricane and three, yes, you heard me correctly, three random Silver League players. With me is Swizzler. How are you today, Swizzler? Oh, I'm awesome. I am awesome, Maddles. And uh, yeah, I'm Swizzler, everybody. I am uh, helping out Team FXO with their content, uh, showing the fans what they want to see. Hopefully, this is what you want to see. Um, it's uh, it's going to be really awesome. Basically, we came up with the idea. Uh, how good exactly are our pro players? How many bronze leaguers? How many silver leaguers, etc.? Can they go one versus? Uh, so that's that's the whole idea of this little mini series. This is kind of like the pilot. Uh, we're gonna do two matches uh, with each other, me and me and Maddles here, and really hope you enjoy it. Maddles, what are your thoughts about this type of format? I think this type of format is going to be really interesting because there's a lot of different strategies that can be employed here depending on how Hurricane wants to try and play it out because the bottom line is the other team is going to have three or three times more resources than he does flat out especially at the start of the game maybe in the later stages where his macro starts coming in he's going to be able to expand them just better have better worker management and things like that but early game he's up against three times as much stuff but He's got the micro, he's got the knowledge, and hopefully he's got the strategy that can make him win. Yeah, and I just want to add, uh, when I was uh, watching him do this, this, this match here, and when I was uh, you know, kind of filming him and his, his crazy micro and his hands flying all over across the keyboard, first off, it looked like he was physically exerting himself. He would fly across the keyboard, you know, going from the left to the right side, left to the right side. You know, he would kind of push his shoulder in to kind of, you know, almost like, a, you know, a master, you know, pianist, right? He's just flying across the keyboard, you know, left, right. It looked exactly like that to me. Uh, it was amazing. And some of the, the things that happened in, in this game and the one that we're going to do just ahead are really insane. I don't know if it's just me. I've been watching pro StarCraft 2 games for, for, for quite a while. And, and some of the stuff that I saw in this game and, and some of the stuff that I saw in the next game, I have not seen in a lot of pro games. Like some crazy micro, some just insane macro. So yeah, it, it's going to be great. Uh, Maddles, what I want to know is, okay, what are your thoughts about the map? Basically, like, is this map gonna gonna be good for the the uh, bronze leaguers, the silver leaguers here, or do you think that it's gonna kind of work against here, or do you think that tiers can have a bit of advantage? Well, we'll wait and see. I mean, if we start the game up, we'll get into that. We'll introduce the two players, and then we can take a look around because we'll get a good idea of what actually Hurricane is gonna be planning on doing. All right, go ahead and count us down then. Okay, so three, two, one, let's get going. Game All resumed. All right, game now, resumed. Would you like to introduce the players, Swizzler? Yes, well, there's a Swizzler, and um, he's not doing anything. And there's <laughs> FXO Hell, he's the, uh, the coach for, for, the, um, for, for the, the team, one of the assistant coaches over at FXO. And of course, there's Hurricane, a crazy awesome pro gamer, uh, insane micro. Oh, uh, man, you guys, you guys have got to watch him when it, in his cup up, upcoming games. I'll, I'll post him all over Facebook when he does get them. But for now, uh, you can bask in his micro glory here. Uh, on the top left, we have Noodler. <laughs> kind of like Sizzler. He is my long-lost brother. And uh, he's the Protoss player. And then we got the, the top center, the 12 o'clock position. We got Panda Man. Uh, he's going to be Terran. And then we got a Zerg on the right, Symboli. So we've got representatives, Silver League representatives of all three races. Now, this is actually going to be really interesting because we were talking about this before we started recording. And I'd say the big thing is there's two main options that Hurricane has got open to him. On the one hand, he could go for a really aggressive opening and just try and rely on microing a couple of units exceptionally well and just trying to kill one, maybe two of his opponents early on. Because the longer this game goes on, there's going to be a point where actually the real long-term macro mechanics aren't going to have kicked in yet, but there's still going to be just so much stuff on the other side that even if he micros perfectly, will be really difficult for him. So on the one hand, you could try and do that. Otherwise, though, because obviously there's no one else playing, you can potentially see Hurricane try and take these three bases very, very early on and just hold the choke south of the watchtower outside his base. And if he manages to do that, he can macro up exceptionally quickly. But for the moment, actually, his one of his opponents is going to come in and get a scout out and see the second gas being taken really early. So 
It looks like he's going to be going for a gateway expand of some kind of variety. He could also go quite tech heavy, but only four probes in there at the moment. So probably just going to be a relatively early expansion. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's going to be... You know, micro is going to be cost effectiveness is going to be one of the main the main uh, name of the game here because his only okay well he's got two major advantages one he's a programmer and two the the opponents he's facing are not they are not one mind they they are working together on RAM and he is working on onboard CPU memory you know so <laughs> so, so basically what we're going to see here is. He's gonna have to be super cost effective. He's gonna have to pick and choose his fights because the 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 opponents, if they're not good enough, they're gonna kind of you know fly at them one by one, and you know they might kind of get caught up in them you know in their in their own units, right? So you know it, it's gonna be interesting to see if he can he can beat out their their raw macro advantage uh, with his micro. I think that's the really big thing is can he actually get himself into a spot where he can engage these armies cost effectively because. Let's face it, if we saw the Protoss player make nothing but Zealots, the Zerg nothing but Roaches, and the Terran nothing but Marines, and if they microed that perfectly, they could go for a very nice push with, a, with well, three times the army of Hurricanes. So I think in that respect, he's got to be a little bit cautious. He's following up his gateway in with two additional gates, so he's going to do a little bit of three-gate pressure. It does have this Mothership Corps on its way to the north position just to get a scout out, but, I mean, already we're starting to see a difference. For example, Hurricane. At this point, he's already three workers uh, ahead of all of his opponents. That is very impressive considering we're only five minutes into the game. That's a huge advantage, and if he carries that on, macro-wise, he should be in an okay spot moving into the later stages of the game. But look at this. The Mothership Corps is now coming in. He's going to try and get a couple of probe kills, and since there's only a sentry coming out, this is a sort of early aggression that isn't going to be too bad, and actually forcing a pull of all of the probes at Noodler's base. Oh yeah, yeah, Mattel's uh, just looking at this here. Oh man, I mean, in a normal game, this would be horrible. This would be this would be game ending. But this is not a normal game. So you know, the, there's still two. There's still almost you know, there's two. There's two bases going up. You know, there's there's actually three bases. Purple alone. The the the, the purple player, the Symboli, he has three bases already. And and the orange and purple player are both untouched untouched as of yet i mean you know yellow he's, he's hurting right i mean that would be a game ender but you know there's still a lot and right now i mean there's there's some zerglings coming down the center of the map so so immediately uh hurricane is gonna have to to, to fend these off you know he's he's on the the back foot already yeah, there's a lot of units coming across, but what I'm really loving from Hurricane is he's got the Dark Shrine coming down. And this is actually one of the things that I thought would be a possibility early on, because if he gets down DTs very, very early, then, well, if one of his opponents doesn't get detection, which for Silver League, as I'm sure there's many people watching who are even in sort of Diamond League who have had that slash of a DT swipe and realized they forgot to make any form of detection. That's a big problem. Also, it's worth noting, if you take a look at the vision currently for the other team, they haven't actually scouted anything of what Hurricane's doing. So they're playing very much blind. Yeah, exactly. They haven't seen any of his tech. But again, because this is a one versus three, going DTs is actually a huge risk because because if if these three players decided to go with a really strong early game, I mean, what would he do, right? Because he's investing a lot into the, the technology. Yeah, luckily he's got those three gates down before he started teching up, so he didn't rush it or anything. He's got the expansion coming. Oh, but some speedlings are about to run into Hurricane's face. This is actually a size of the of speedlings. The oh, but the force fields. fields oh. oh, that was really nice. Getting a tight little choke there. He's only getting cleaned up really effectively. And actually, in terms of resources lost, hardly anything has done down this game in that push because there was already the Mothership Corps dead. And uh, really, from those gateway units, pretty much nothing died. So, good defense by Hurricane. Yeah, Hurricane's doing a good job. I mean, because they're Zerglings, I mean, he did a really good job there. The, the force fields that trapped him in, the Zerglings were like, where am I supposed to go? Overmind, tell me where I'm supposed to go. Uh, but Tears Micro, just uh, too good for the Overmind. Uh, I mean, if you look at the resources lost, I mean, it's it's actually quite similar still because, you know, we got the units trading. But overall, that was a, a really good hold by, by Hurricane there. Unfortunately for their, his opposition though, DTs are about to make their way through. The first DT coming up into Noodler's base at the top left and the second one already working away as an actual expansion of Panda Man. The mules are getting focused. This is doing a lot of damage here and 
this is exactly what Hurricane needs to be doing. The scan does go off to try and find the DT at the natural base of Panda Man, but he's going to be able to get out of range. So that scan has now been used, did not spot the DT, and the DT is going to keep going. A second scan goes down, still not finding it, <laughs> and now the Zerg player is about to get some of this aggression. This DT is just working its way. Well, the two DTs are killing everything, pretty much. Yeah, these DTs are, are becoming mentors. They're going to teach the rest of the Protoss how to win. <laughs> Luckily though, we do have an Overseer coming up for the Zerg player, but yeah, uh, Noodler, he's not in the most comfortable spot. He's lost 11 workers already to this single DT. He doesn't have oh. any detection. He's he's desperately trying to make some photon cannons, which will obviously mean the DT gets shut down, but it's not going to last too long because, yeah, as we can see here, 16, 17 workers already killed now. This is not looking good for Noodler, but actually Hurricane's small push there did a lot, and all while behind this, he's been teching up. He's getting his Colossi out, and he's just gonna start his upgrade shortly with the Forge finishing. Yeah, yeah, it looks like uh, Hurricane's getting ready for a bit more of a, a, a standard medium, mid game. Uh, get his Colossus out, all of the Stalkers, you know, his Morals, whatnot. Uh, basically, I mean, it, he can't really go anything too crazy because, he, you know, he knows that he's, he's against a, a massive amount of resources and just pure uh, manpower on the other team because, I mean, we're talking about three players here. I mean, you know, Noodler, in a normal game, he'd be just like GG right now. But he's got basically five bases and a triple APM behind him. So, you know, it, 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 it's, it's going to be a long uphill battle for Hurricane. Well, here's a nice little stat for you. Currently, if you add up the APM of the other three players, it doesn't actually equal the average APM of Hurricane. <laughs> That is how much quicker he's playing at the moment. So that three times APM advantage isn't quite enough to actually be superior to what uh, Power Game is going to be doing. And how is actually pushing across the map at the moment with quite a sizable chunk. He's also got that War Prism coming in. That's a smart move because that War Prism is going to allow him to go for some harassment down to the Zerg's base. And taxing your opponent's multitasking is a really smart move by Hurricane because it's just going to mean that he's going to force them to try and play at his speed. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean. Basically, oh, we've Hurricane... got a push coming up. Oh. This is really good. Up at up at Nubis base, we see a lot of damage being done here. Um, this is where the problems are really going to start coming in because these four swords are blocking out all of Nubis army, and at the same time, there's the Zeta drop in the third main base. Yeah, he's in two places right now. I mean, Hurricane is right now. Like, look at these Zealots. They're just kind of holding back this massive Zerg force from helping his buddy. I mean, you know, Hurricane is here with, like, half the forces, but he's managing to hold out because look at Noodler's, look at Noodler's units. Two force fields. Noodler cannot even help. He's just sitting there. And then, okay, so he's back at the base. All right. He called back to the base. All right, no problem. Oh, so that was amazing. I mean, you know, so Hurricane's just abusing that ability of Protoss to get right back to their base. So he's just going there. He's, he's you know, exploiting his advantage of having, uh, you know, a micro advantage over one opponent, trying to get his buddies to kind of go over, over the map, you know, split them with his warp prism, you know, get in the back of their of their lines. Uh, you know, I, I would say against one opponent, you know, having this, you know, two or three split push, you know, with, with a, a warp prism dropping in the back of their base would be awesome. But I mean, this is three players we're talking about, so it's almost like each player is playing their own kind of copy of Hurricane here. Yeah, it's it's going to be pretty tough for them, but what I'm loving from Hurricane at the moment is he's double expanding behind this. So he's now up to those four bases, and actually, as a defensive position, this isn't too bad for him, because even though it's quite a wide open area, it's not considerably worse than, say, trying to defend his natural base. It's only a bit wider. He's got a good amount of tech out. In terms of the work account as well, he's already up to 60 probes. So he's 10 workers ahead of the Zerg. He's, well, it's, there's only 15 probes out at the moment for the Protoss player Noodler and 47 SCVs for the Terrans. So he's actually not too far behind economically. And as a result of that, he's just going to be able to keep pushing out. His upgrades are all looking fairly nice too. The Zerg player is actually upgrading really nicely. 2-1 out at the moment, so that could be a little bit tough, but these force fields from Hurricane so far have been splendid. Oh yeah, and you know, but, I mean, in a normal game we'd say that having almost double the, the drones and probes would be a, a bit of an economic advantage, but here I guess it's, it's kind of evening up, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, man, well, huge battle, huge battle. Oh, look at this. So good. Oh I man, the force fields. Oh, they're just, they're just, they cut, they completely cut that army in half. Oh. That was insanely good. Like, you got two pump there, so you stopped most of the circles straight away, but yeah, the Zerg players are doing so much good blink forward at Bud. Look at this coming on from behind. Just how many stalkers, how much infantry there is there. That is a, a scary lot. force, and I... 
a lot. If you looked at this in an even game, there would be no way this small throw just forces push in there. But yeah, here he goes. He's just segmenting off chunks, forcing the AI to try and go in. There's a. It's just where are these players' attention? That's the big thing to watch, but oh, a single swarm host. Oh, he's in trouble now. There's one swarm host there. That's, yeah, yeah. that's going to force it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Colossus, if you look really closely, like, look at the look at the Stalker micro that's going on here. I mean, as soon as the Stalker is getting hit, boom, he's blinking back behind the rest of the forest. And, and it's letting him actually trade evenly with this massively superior forest. Yeah, but actually having said that, there's a drop coming down here against Hurricane. This is a bit frustrating for him. He's going to have to be mass recalling back to try and defend against this. So straight away, this means oh. that he lost a couple of workers there, but it wasn't a huge number. It was, well, it was just a small chunk, but look at the actual resources lost across the entire thing. So far, Hurricane's lost just under 3,000 resources this game. His opponents, though, they've lost like over 8,000. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh man, amazing so, what Micro can do. I mean, what you're seeing here, what you're see seeing right here is basically oh, up. the game. Instead of whooping up at yeah. the top base as well at the moment for Nuno, he's losing even more probes. Yeah, I feel bad for Nuno to come up against most of this. So he's, he's just like playing around with them at the top there. He's just trying to, to get some top damage down, trying to even it up, you know? Like, because they still have a large macro advantage, you know, they still, basically, it's still basically, what, what, six base? Well, almost seven base against, against the three base of Protoss right now. Yep. It's, but the thing is, he's engaging so cost effectively, he's going to be doing so again. Oh, the force so fields! Straight away, splitting part of that army there, so really nice there for Hurricane, and he's going to have seen out a lot of stuff. And that's really what he wants to be doing. But while he's seeing this out, it's going to be really problematic for the third player, and taking off their armies one at a time, so he's taking each individual fight. The reinforcements only just now are coming down, stimming his entire <laughs> army, entire territory. <laughs> there, so he lost like half of his health. Oh, like, the last stems, march! So. The last march of the drugged up marines. By the time they get there, they're not going to be feeling very good. No, oh, no, look at these marines! Oh, they're all poor, they're poor marines. Punch. Get to rehab. We need oh. to get them to rehab, stat. <laughs> Those medevacs, they've got, they've got their work cut out, that's for sure. Now, as you can see, we've got a, a sizable chunk of forces here. We've also got some high Templar coming in. Storm is finished here for Hurricane 2. So, he's really coming together with all of the stuff he wants. He's also kind of maxed out economically. He's got 75 probes. He's cut probe production for quite a while now, but he is still trying to take this gold base. And that could allow him to come and really get a bit further ahead. And he's still continuing with the war prism. It's coming back in. He's going to scout the gold base of Noodler. And... I'm surprised he's letting that live at the moment, but nope, there we go, it's coming back. There we go, base noodler, you're not gonna get to keep that. Oh, yeah, yeah, Hurricane, he's really keeping on top of this. I mean, he's not gonna let his opponents get any more of an economic damage than they already have. I mean, what you're seeing here, as I said before, oh, oh, there's a big, oh, the center of the map, okay. Oh, the stalkers coming in, and those drug vet marines, they just, they don't know what to do against this massive Colossus stalker force. They're just getting burned to the ground right now. Oh, and the storm! And there's the storm oh. well. And that's the entire Terran army. Oh. <laughs> like, in a couple of seconds. At the same time, though, there is a drop coming up from Terran Blair, but there's a good way of walking back at Hurricane Space, so you can be able to shut that down. But the Zerg Blair, you know, in huge amounts of problems, we've got the Zella warp in, and Noodle is natural, too. So, he's just running around everywhere, just doing so much. There's also still a warp prison in the main of Noodle, but that gets cleaned up. But for the moment, Hurricane, he's pushing forward and just annihilating everything in his path. Yeah, I, I mean... And and it's it's amazing what those colossus can do against uh, primarily marine force that are on half life from being drugged up for so long. Yeah. Don't overstim. That's the moral of the story. So here we go. The stalkers are now cleaning up the dark player very very effectively. The cross is still up. York's fun is trying to get repaired very quickly by the SCVs. The storms are hitting me. The cross is shredding. Oh, me. those poor SCVs. It's getting slaughtered right now. Uh, yeah, a couple of units gonna come in to try and take down this process, but is it gonna be able to? No. Oh no, it does. Just next to you gonna kill them. Yeah, so looking at the active forces right now, I mean, Hurricane is basically now on the same supply as the rest of his opponents, and that is not a good thing. No, it isn't a good thing. And Hurricane, he's just still pushing through. He's got a DT attacking Noodler at the same time as. <laughs> Oh, poor He's Noodler! Everywhere. Oh, Noodler! Oh, 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 poor Noodler! He's... Oh, after this game, Noodler is gonna be... Oh, man, every game, every game from here on out, he's gonna be getting Observer right away. Right away, robotics into Observer, first thing, before Gateways. 
Yeah, Noodler, the, the big thing he's done though is he's swapped in like eight, nine DTs of his own. And he's just gonna go and try and counter attack. He's just be like, you kill me with DTs, I'm gonna try and kill you with DTs. But just look oh, at how yeah. we can go. He's pushing into this Zerg base now. He's knocking out, he's already knocked out the third, he's about to kill the natural, and there just really isn't very much else coming down. There's five corruptors, but the stalkers are gonna be able to deal with those very easily and very quickly. Yeah, I mean, Hurricane has basically been managing these opponents, you know, just kind of managing the advantage, you know? He, he, he has oh, here comes Zulu's big DTs! Oh, look at it, look at it! The DTs, they're gonna get the Nexus! There's so much damage when you put that many of them. Zulu has genuinely, genuinely got seven DTs out of the field right now. He's running around killing everything, so he's kind of sniped off the bases. He doesn't care about anything. These, <laughs> these DTs aren't afraid, nothing! They aren't afraid! No, but they're just going to push in, they're just going to slash through everything, but unfortunately, at the moment, we see Symboli is getting completely annihilated. He's about to lose. Um, he's got nothing really back here to defend with. The Colossi, the actual Colossi count is down to only a single one, which is his natural base, so he did lose quite a few there. But Hurricane is now down to only up against two opponents, one of which only has... Well, the Terran player only has five enemies and currently has no income, because he's not mining from anywhere. That's a problem for him. That is a problem, and if you, my, my God, battles, my God, uh, <laughs> good game, three first one. Oh, Simbali, oh my God, if you look at the resources, oh, okay, so that's that's GG. Let's let's take a look at the resources lost here. Hurricane, he lost 14k resources, but his opponents lost nearly 50,000 resources. 50,000. <laughs> <laughs> my god that, that's cost effective that is that is quite cost effective this reminds me back in like back in the beta days of heart of the swarm that kind of trade would only occur when you could fit four hellbats in a medevac <laughs> like oh. that is very very cost effective so congratulations to hurricane there showing us that yeah up against three pairs he does he does fairly good yeah if you i mean you know the whole story that unfolded be before us here to me was Basically, the game, the game's micro and macro kind of distilled into separate parts because, on the one hand, we have our, our our pro player Hurricane who has the micro advantage, massive, massive micro advantage, and then on the other hand, we have the Silver League players who have a massive macro advantage. And so here we're seeing, you know, how far can you really go with micro? How, you know, like a pro gamer and and especially just you know grandmasters. You know, how far does that micro really go? I mean, and, and right here you're seeing it, it is, it goes 40,000 resources. That's how far it goes. Yeah, so that is really what won in the game. I think his strategy as well was really good too. So he aggressively started up with those, well, with DTs running into the bases. That kept his opponent's macro a bit lower, all while he was busy back at home just macroing up himself. So great play there by Hurricane and that was the game. Yeah, and Mattles, there's one thing I want to uh, kind of go back. Uh, that that awesome split with the, the force fields splitting the, the roaches kind of in half. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. Do you remember where it was? You know, he split the, the whole Zerg army in half with, with some force fields and, and took out half of it. I can't remember what point it was exactly. I know it was around here, but you've got some of the roaches coming through. Um, it was after this point. It was about, I think it was about 18 minutes. Yeah, let's just quickly bring it up. Oh, okay, bring it up a little bit here. Fast forward. Try to find. Okay, so so here we go. So the Zerg, he's moving his, he's moving around his uh, horses here. A bit like here's the push coming. Here's the push. Okay, right. So here we go. Normal speed. Okay, so this. So right now, if you look at the 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 map, you look at like, I mean. There's a lot more on, on their side here. There's a lot more on the Silver League player side, but they're not they're not moving exactly together. And so this opens up, you know, Hurricane, he's kind of, you know, he's right at the front here, and he's thinking, how am I going to overcome this macro? Uh, so how is he gonna do it? He's gonna do it with micro. So just watch here, watch this here, but let's just close it down. So he, he's got the force fields right in the front here, right? And so Symboli is coming in. He doesn't realize how close those sentries are to being able to cut his arm in half. So he pushes it, and then boom, right there. Half the army instantly dead from the micro. There's claw side just yep. going to work on them. It's really good play, and that is exactly what Hurricane needed to be doing. So I think that was probably the best engagement of the game. 
Again. So, GG to both of, or to all of these players, all of the Silver Lakers who played here, I'm sure that they're going to be wondering what the heck just happened. And also, GD to Hurricane, uh, everyone, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, again, Mattos, uh, he's, he's a really cool caster. If you want to check him out, Mattos, why don't you just let them know where you, they can find you. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, at MattosSC2, or on YouTube.com forward slash Mattos91, plus on all live things like WCS, EU, I cast there quite a lot, and the ESED UK Masters, and various other things. Best thing to do is just follow me on Twitter, and then you can find out. <laughs> And if you guys enjoyed this this you know one versus three grand, uh, game, and if you want to see some more cool stuff, uh, you know free for alls, and maybe you know keep this this series going up to like gold or masters, something like that, uh, just you know leave us some comments. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're on our website, just uh, get over to our forums or even Reddit. Just you know leave some comments there. Uh, we'd appreciate. It. Just let me know, and I can get this kind of stuff out to you, and we can we can keep improving it, and make it really awesome. Uh, but besides that, Mattles, any last words? No, just thank you all very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like the video, leave a cool comment, and of course, subscribe. All right, everyone, have a great day.